morning. As you can see, I brought a friend with me this morning to help me with my talk. You're probably familiar with the idiom, have a monkey on your back. Having a monkey on your back means you have a difficult problem to solve, a burden to carry, or a challenging task at hand. It comes from the idea that monkeys can be annoying creatures. They can pull your hair, they can scream in your ear, they can even bite you. Don't even think about it. Monkeys, like problems that need to be solved, are things that we hope to be rid of, if even for a short period of time, until the monkey returns or her problem. So this is my monkey. His name is Picaroncito. And <clears throat> the monkey on my back today is to help each of us understand that the most important thing we need to do is recognize, accept, and deal with the learning monkeys in our lives. This will do the most to help us be successful in our future. As I work with my students in problem solving activities, I've come to the conclusion that we as teachers assume entirely too much responsibility for our students' learning. Some of you may be thinking, how can a teacher assume too much responsibility for their students' learning? Aren't teachers entirely responsible for their students' learning? After 30 years of education, I've come to the conclusion that my most important role and responsibility as a teacher is to create an environment that allows for student self-discovery. My role is not to be an information dispenser. My role is not to be, even worse yet, my role is not to be a rescuer from student learning frustration. <clears throat> I think a lot of students, I'm sorry, I think a lot of teachers are of the mindset that if their student is temporarily frustrated or if they have anxiety, then that must be some um, teaching deficiency that they have. If we're prone to feel this way, I think it's important to remember what Leonardo da Vinci said about teaching and learning. He said, you cannot teach a man anything. You can only help him discover it for themselves. In a book entitled The Next 50 Years, Roger Shank, a leading researcher in artificial intelligence and a distinguished career professor at Carnegie Mellon University foretells what dealing with information, learning, and problem solving will look like in the future. Shank maintains that as information becomes more and more readily accessible, it becomes devalued. And knowledge as we know it, that is, having things committed to memory, will become almost unnecessary in an information on demand society. In a world such as this, the best and the brightest students will not be the ones that know the most stuff or score the highest on the test. The best and the brightest students will be the ones that can ask important and meaningful questions, questions that the computer will be unable to answer. So how do we prepare our students for a world such as this? I found an account of an interaction between a master teacher and an apprentice learner, which I think particularly applies to our roles and responsibilities as teachers and learners. The apprentice learner had a difficult problem to solve. And so they asked the master teacher for help. Because after all, they're the master teacher and they're supposed to know these things. The master teacher's response was highly instructive. They scolded the learner a little bit by saying, you know, you had this difficult problem to solve, but you yourself took absolutely no thought on how to solve it. The only effort you took was to come and ask me for help. If you want to grow in your understanding and ability, you first must study the problem out in your own mind. Come up with some answers on your own. And only after you've done this, only after you've done this, should you come and ask me what I think. One problem that our students have in today's information on demand society is they don't have to work very hard for their answers. A lot of times the monkey that's on their back is easily dispatched by a simple Google search. Presently we're seeing how Google's Alexa and Amazon's Echo and Siri's Apple Siri um, immediately gives us the Star Trek-like experience of simply asking the question into the air and having the question immediately answered by the electronics built into our environment. 
But what about questions that are more specific to a situation, require a little bit more creative problem-solving thought, or are even questions that have no known answer yet? What do we do about situations like that? One thing that I've found that really helps me with my students is to make them ask a specific question about the help that they hope to receive. By doing this, it helps me to see where they are in their mindset and where they are in their problem solving abilities. There are four levels of problem solving ability in this hierarchy model. And you can tell where the student is in their ability by the question that they ask you. Level one, I don't understand. This student has assumed no responsibility for learning on their own. They actually have no anxiety because they assume no responsibility. They actually want you to take their monkey away from them and solve the problem for them. And that's a natural response. One thing that's really helpful in a situation like that is using Picarone Chito as a learning aid. Because uh, with Picarone Chito, it's really important to have a visual to help the student realize that the monkey is on their back. And it's useful to recognize that there's a monkey on their back. It's useful to empathize with them. It's useful to um, give them encouragement and not let them be discouraged and give up. It's useful to help them continue thinking of ways they can solve their problem and actually asking them, well, what are some of your ideas for doing this? In a level one learner, they frequently will try to put the role back on the, the teacher and to make them help them solve their problem. And again, that's a natural response. One of the best quotes that I've heard for problem solving actually comes from my father-in-law. And he was a senior scientist at Lockheed Martin. And one of the things he would tell his engineering design team was to go to where you don't know and then go to work. Level two learner. Level two learner might say something like, can you give me a hint? In this case, the level two learner is accepting of the problem ownership, but they just don't know where to start. The way the teacher can help the student in this situation is by reminding them of past learning when the problem solving loop was demonstrated and modeled for them. Also helping them recognize that similarities and patterns and processes can help them direct them towards an answer, as well as co continue to coach them in creative problem-solving thought. Level three learner. Level three learner would probably say something like this. I need help. This doesn't work. Can, can you help me with this? I tried this, but it didn't work. This student is entirely accepting of the problem, and they've actually started to try to do some things but they've gotten lost in the process. They've made a wrong turn somewhere. The best way the teacher can help this student is by help, helping them think about their thinking. Go back and think aloud and go step by step through the process. In this way, the student begins to get their mind around the problem and learn the skills of troubleshooting. That's really where we want our students to be. We want them to be able to troubleshoot a problem on their own. A level four learner would say something like, what can I do to solve this problem? See, the student really has it now. Instead of asking the teacher how to solve the problem, they're asking themselves how to solve the problem, which is even better, because now they are troubleshooting the problem on their own. This is our ultimate goal, as we strive to help our, teacher, uh, to help, as we strive to help our students become successful problem solvers in an information-on-demand uh, information society. As we require our students to ask specific questions about the help they hope to receive as we help our students realize that learning frustrations are actually an, an ally and not an enemy, as we help our students recognize that the monkey on their back is something that they want to get rid of, but is as they recognize that it's there, they learn to get rid of it, that's beneficial. 
As we do all these things, we help our students to become effective problem solvers in an information on demand society. It's like me taking the monkey from them and saying, hey, Coloncito, why do you have to be such an annoyance? Why do you have to give my students such a hard time? But in the end, I have to give the monkey back to the student because after all, it is their monkey. It is their problem to solve. It is their learning experience to have. Our students can be successful in an information on demand society as we always remember that if you tell me the answer, I will never remember it. If you let me discover the answer for myself, I'll never forget it. Thank you.